Yeah, here's welcome to the, the next lesson. Um, we're going to be looking at proteins. But before that, a starter, I'd like you to answer these four questions. Okay, so what I'd like you to do, can you pause the video, do the starter, and then unpause it because I'm just about to go over the questions. Okay, so question one. Margarine can be produced by the hardening of vegetable oil. Name the chemical reaction in the process, okay? So, the hardening of an oil, you need to know, is hydrogenation, okay? The addition of hydrogen, yeah? We add hydrogen over the carbon to carbon double bonds, and we get a fat, in this case, margarine, okay? What catalyst would need to be used? Again, you need to be up to scratch with your catalyst, it is a nickel catalyst, yeah? Um, triglycerides contain three ester links. What are triglycerides commonly known as? Again, this question tricks a lot of people, but it's very straightforward. Triglycerides are fats or oils, yeah? That's it. Now, question three, oil X reacted with 9 centimetre cubed of bromine water and oil Y reacted with 6.5 centimetre cubed. In terms of structure, what oil would have the higher boiling point and why? Okay, now, it would be oil Y, okay, and I'm going to show you why just by showing you my answer here. Oil Y has less bromine reacting with it. Yeah, it's only got 6.5 centimetre cube compared to 9. So that tells us we must have less carbon to carbon double bonds. If we've got less carbon to carbon double bonds, that means we're going to get less kinking in the molecule. Okay, and if there's less kinking, that means they can pack closer together. Yeah, which means we're going to get more or stronger LDFs. Um, oh, just add a wee bit in here that are harder to break, okay, just harder to break, and that's going to give them a higher boiling point, okay, so there you go. Question four, name the chemical reaction and catalyst used in the breaking up of a fat. Now fats, remember, are triglycerides, they're esters, so to break up an ester, we use the hydrolysis process, okay? And it's going to be a sodium hydroxide catalyst, yeah? Again, you need to know your catalyst. Right, that's your starter. I hope you did okay there. Right, so, like I said, we are moving on to proteins. So this is lesson number one in terms of proteins, okay? Now, I'll give you a wee bit of background to proteins first, and then we'll start looking at the chemistry of them, okay? If you do biology, you'll probably feel a wee bit more at home here, because I believe you have covered proteins by now. Um, but don't worry, if you haven't done biology, I'll, I'm doing it from scratch, okay? Right. So, first things first, we need to do a wee bit of revision from Nat 5, yeah? Feels like a lifetime ago. So, from Nat 5, you will know that nitrogen is one of the three essential elements. Yeah, for plant growth, stuff like that. So nitrogen is one of the three essential elements. Now, you don't need to know this, but just a uh, principle, I suppose. Phosphorus and potassium were the other two. Yeah, and, I, and the way I taught it last year was NPK. Yeah, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, NPK. Now, we're going to focus on nitrogen. Yeah, nitrogen is used in building proteins. Okay? 
Now, you, all, you, you all already know this. Where do we get proteins? We get proteins from our diet. Okay, so nitrogen is used in building proteins and we get proteins from our diet. Now, there are various other uh, ways of getting this, but it mainly comes from meat and fish. Okay, now I know obviously uh, vegan diets, you still need to get protein, there's lots of different alternatives, but usually meat and fish are the two uh, main ones there. So basically, uh, obviously nitrogen, uh, the plants, absorb nitrogen through the roots. Uh, for example, a cow would eat the plants and then we eat the cow, that's how we're getting the proteins, okay? So, why, why protein? Okay, what does protein do? Very much like how uh, fats and oils give you energy, protein it has, an, it has a specific function. So why protein? Protein is used and sorry, used for growth and tissue repair. Yeah, very useful for building muscle. Yeah, if, if you go to the gym, you obviously you'll lift the weights, you'll tear your muscles, and then you'll eat lots of protein, and your protein builds your muscles back up, tell you about from uh, a wee bit bigger and that's how obviously you get stronger. So used for growth and tissue repair. That's one of them. It's also involved, this is probably more uh, for biology, involved in maintenance, uh, maintenance and regulation of life processes. Okay? Right. Now, we're going to start looking at the structure. The structure of proteins. Okay? Now, what you need to know, and you can get asked this, this question comes up all the time, it's just one of these things, you just need to know. Proteins are polymers, okay, we're coming back to polymers, if you can remember that from that five. Proteins are polymers that are made from amino acid molecules. Okay, so we're bringing in a new term, amino acids. Now, biology, biologists among us, you'll know this straight away. Um, amino acids, they are what we call the building blocks of making proteins, okay? So, proteins are polymers uh, that are made from amino acid molecules. Amino acids... react together by a process called condensation. Now you're used to condensation reactions, yeah? And then this one will be a blast from the past from that five, condensation polymerization, okay? Now in that five, you did addition polymerization. We don't really do uh, addition at higher. We're looking at condensation polymeri uh, polymerization, and I'll show you uh, what I mean by that in a wee while. Okay? Now, another wee subheading. We're going to look at what an amino acid is. We're going to look at the, the chemical makeup of an amino acid. Now, what you need to know about an amino acid, and this is so important, yeah? In fact, to be fair, all these three points here are so important. So, amino acids, they contain a 
carboxyl group. Okay, this is where you really need to be up to speed with your functional groups because this is another, we're going to learn another two functional groups this lesson and you really need to know them all. Okay, so it contains a carboxyl group and obviously you need to know that's your COOH. Okay, but not only that, they contain this new one. Okay, and an amine group. Okay, now the amine group looks like that. It's N bonded to two H's. Now, obviously, N is in group five, got a valence of three. Um, it's bonded to two H's, or you can just write it like that. But just be aware, I'll go between the two, but just be aware, obviously, that is what it looks like. So the amine group, NH2. Okay, so they contain a carboxyl group and an amine group at either end of the molecule. Okay? Now, let me show you an example. Yeah, what I mean by uh, the amino acid. So what we have, we have the carboxyl group. In fact, let's try it out first. What we have, we always have C, C, N. Yeah, C, C, N. So at the end, we have our, at one end, we have a carboxyl group. Yeah, and then the other end, we have our amine group. Okay. So I'll, I'll highlight those two. That's the carboxyl group, and that is the amine group. Okay, so amine group, carboxyl group. And obviously this middle C here, we need to fill up the valences, carbon's got a valence of four. What happens in the bottom, we've got a H, and then on the top, we've got an R, okay? Now R, like it does uh, in other molecules, R just means the rest of the molecule, okay? Now just a wee sort of side note, there are about Okay, that's what that wee symbol means, around about 20 amino acids are available, okay? And they all change due to this R changing, okay? So R could be H, R could be CH3, R could be CH2, CH3, it all changes, okay? So, um, for example, if R equals H. Okay, what we do is we draw C, 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 N. We have our carboxyl group. At one end, the amine group at the other. H there, and then R will equal H. Okay, so that is what R is equal. Okay? Now, if R equals H, this molecule is called glycine. Now, don't worry, you don't need to know the name of the different molecules. I'm just showing you how we get different amino acids. Yeah? Now, if R equals, let's go for CH2, C6, H5. Okay? So, again... Right out now you can write it C C N but the S you might flip it they might give you N C C it doesn't matter it's just the molecule flipped so at this side we've got the amine group and then at the right side we've got the carboxyl group yeah just be aware that the the molecules can flip now H goes at the bottom and then R that's going to be C H two C six H Five. So if I again, if I highlight that,
that's what that is. Okay, and if that's the case, if R does equal CH2C6H5, we would call this molecule, I'll write it down here for space, phenyl alanine. Alanine, sorry. Phenyl alanine. Okay? Now, as I said, uh, there's about 20 amino acids that we can that we can use, yeah. Now, what you need to know, and this is important, okay, let's start this with a highlighter. You can highlight it if you want, okay. Now, you need to know what the term essential amino acids, what that means, okay. So essential amino, uh, amino acids are Amino acids that the body needs to make proteins but can't make Okay, so the body, essential amino acids are amino acids that the body can't make. Okay, so there's, there's certain amino acids that we need in order, uh, so we consume the amino acids and inside our body it goes through condensation, polymerization and that's converted into a protein that we would need. Okay, so that's what we mean by that term essential amino acids. Essential amino acids are amino acids that the body cannot make. So. How do we get them? How do we get these essential amino acids? Okay, we get the essential amino acids through food. Okay, that's where it comes back to the whole meat and fish. Yeah, so that's where we're getting these essential amino acids. So please, this question comes up, honestly, no joke, pretty much every paper, one mark question, but it's an easier one mark question. What is meant by the term essential amino acids or what do we call amino acids that the body can't make essential? Okay, so just make sure you are aware of that. Okay? Right. Next one. Okay, we are doing a lot, uh, this double. Next one we're going to look at is the amide as another functional group. Okay, like I said at the start of unit two, you need to know your functional groups because there are so many of them. Is the amide slash peptide link or links? Yeah. Now, Either one is fine, okay? The SK refer to both of them, so obviously we need to, I need to teach you both of them. Doesn't matter uh, what you say, what you write. I'll be switching between the two, just obviously to get you used to them, but the amide or peptide links, you need to know, okay? So, let's make a wee note here. Amide, peptide links, are the functional group, functional groups found in proteins, okay? So amide slash peptide links are the functional groups found in proteins. They are made, okay, and again you need to know how proteins are made, I've already explained it, they are made when amino acids react together via condensation, 
And again, remember we are making a polymer, so condensation, polymerize, polymerization reactions. Okay. Now, I'm going to start you off. Um, I'm going to start you off slow. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what happens when three polymers, eh, sorry, three amino acids join together. Okay, so example, three different reacting. Okay, so three different amino acids reacting. So if I draw the first one, okay, I'm going to draw um, N. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a box. Okay, normally you draw N, C, C, and you would, okay, but I'm just going to make this box diagonal lines like that. And that box just represents the, the carbon with the H at the bottom and then that R group. Okay, it's got a very special R group. It could be H, it could be CH3, it could be anything. Okay, so got an N there, we've got an N there. So we've got our amine group. Yeah, remember your amine group. Uh, you've got your carboxyl group. Okay, and that will react with another amino acid. Now, the only, diff the only thing that makes amino acids different is this middle part here. So instead of doing diagonal lines, I'm going to do vertical lines. So that's just representing that the R group is different. Okay? And then our final amino acid. Again, always the same. You always get an amine group and a carboxyl group. The only thing that changes is this middle part here, and I'll just put a wee star in, okay? Just to show, symbolize that it's different. Okay, so we've got three different amino acids here. Now this is a cool part, and it's actually something you've already done, okay? Because it is condensation, you've done condensation reactions when we looked at fats, eh, when we looked at esters, and then when we looked at fats and oils. Okay, so what happens? Remember a definition of condensation. It's when two small molecules join together to make a larger molecule with the elimination of a small molecule, usually water. Okay, now looking at this, you can probably see what's about to happen. Okay, now what happens is very much like in making esters, the OH group of the carboxyl group reacts with the H group, in this case, of the amine group, okay? And what we are left with, we lose water, yeah? And the same thing happens here. The OH group of the carboxyl group reacts with the H group of the amine group, and we lose water, okay? now. Just bear in mind, it's the carboxyl group and the amine group of different amino acids that are reacting together. You'll see that the carboxyl group of this molecule isn't reacting with the H of the same molecule. It has to be different molecules, okay? Now, what would happen, obviously you don't just ever have three molecules uh, kicking about, you'd have millions. So this H here would obviously react with another OH and then obviously the OH, that's going to react. So you're going to lose another H2O, OH, H. Yeah, and that's just going to carry on and on and on like a polymer. Now, again, very much like in esters, the carbon here joins up. Again, instead of the O and the alcohol, it joins up to the N of the um, amine group. And the same 
with this carbon, that joins up with the end of that, and then obviously that would join up with another C, and that C would join up with another N. Now what you're left with, okay, remember the name of the reaction. It's a condensation polymerization, because we are making polymers. Okay? So, what we have to do, just write what we see. So we see a N bonded to H, okay? And then that N is bonded to this square here. Yeah? And then that square is bonded to a C, double bond O. And then this is where it changes. That C, it's not bonded to the OH now because that's been lost. The C is bonded to the N. Okay, N, H. Okay, then that N is bonded to another box with vertical lines this time. And that's bonded to a C, double bond O. Yeah, and then that C is not bonded to the OH anymore because we've lost that. That C is bonded to the N. Yeah, which is bonded to a H. And then that N is bonded to a box with a star in it. And then that box is bonded to a C, double bond O. Okay, so that there is our protein. Now, I want to make one thing clear, and I made a massive, massive play on this at Nat5, you'll probably remember. And I'm going to make a even more of a, like a bigger play on this, you need, and I cannot stress this enough, because it's a polymer, you need to get your end bonds in, okay? So start that, end bonds need to be written, okay? Because it's a polymer, the chain goes on and on and on and on. Okay, so make sure you get your end bonds in, please. Now, the functional group, yeah, the amide link, the peptide link, it's this here. Okay, so this C double bond O N single bond H, and remember, because it's a link, you need to get your two links, your two end bonds in, okay, your two links in. This is called the amide or peptide link, okay? You do need to know both of them because the SKA, they do mix and match, but you, it doesn't matter what one uh, you write. So the amide or peptide link. Now, here we've got one, we've also got another one. We've got one here. Okay, now obviously, uh, because it's a polymer, this would go on and on. We would have another link there, we would have another link there, and then that would keep going on and on and on. Okay. Now, obviously, uh, I've forgotten one thing. We've got this uh, protein plus three moles of water, one, two, three. Okay, so that there, molecule, in fact, not molecule, uh, not really a molecule, the polymer is a protein. Okay, it contains numerous amide and peptide links, and the only thing that makes like amino acids and proteins different is these middle parts, okay? The middle C part, where R could be whatever, okay? Now, we're going to do one more example. So, we can do a question. Um, so, draw 
straw protein made um, these three amino acids react. Okay, so let's go for let's go for this one. Just simple, nice and simple. Um, oh, M. B. Let's go for. Again, you'll notice that I'll, sometimes I draw it like that, sometimes I draw it at an angle to show the sort of 3D shape of it. Doesn't really, doesn't really matter um, how you do it. Okay, and if we do C, da -da 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 -da. Okay. Now that's not a mistake. That's the three. That's the three amino acids that I want you to draw. You'll notice that two of them are the same, but I'll come back to that in a wee while. So it's up to you. You can pause the video, attempt it yourself. Okay. But we'll go through it now. Again, what's going to happen here? That amino acid reacts with that. Reacts with that. So. Remember the H of the amino, uh, the amine group reacts with the OH of the carboxyl group of another amino acid, yeah? And then the same thing happens here. The H of the amine group reacts with the, uh, uh, the OH of the carboxylic acid group of another molecule and we're getting, we're losing, uh, we're losing a H2O molecule. And obviously, uh, because we are making polymers, that would be lost, and then that would be lost uh, to another one. And what we are going to get, okay, remember the type of reaction this is called? It's a condensation polymerization reaction. Okay? So, what we're going to be left with, we will be left with C, C, N, yeah, because remember that N will bond to that C, that N will bond to that C. So it's going to be C, C, N, C, C, N, C, C, N. Okay, so just copy it, double bond O there, double bond O there, uh, H and H, then we've got N bonded to a H, then we repeat. C double bond O, but this time we've got a H in the bottom, but we've got a CH3 here. Yeah, CH3 there, CH3 there, and then N bonded there, uh, and then repeat C double bond O. This time R is equal in H again, yeah, and then N goes there. And again, remember what I've said, make sure you've got your N bonds because they are polymers. Okay, and that's it. That is our molecule. Remember, we've got one that is our amide, or again, peptide link. Yeah, either one will be suffice. And that's it. Yeah, that's how we do condensation polymerization. Now, Another wee question. So hopefully, yeah, you should know this molecule here is a protein. Okay, try not to get protein and amino acids mixed up. Amino acids are smaller. Yeah, they contain a carboxyl group and an amine group. Proteins are polymers, they're massive, and they contain peptide links. Yeah, now, Here's a wee question, how many different, okay, how many different amino 
acids make up the protein above. Okay, how many different amino acids make up the protein above? Now looking at this, okay, we've got one amino acid here. We've got two amino acids. We've got three amino acids. So you might think, oh, the answer's three, but that's not what the question said. The question's asked, how many different amino acids are made. Now we've got three amino acids here, but you should know that that amino acid and that amino acid are the same. Okay, so we've only got two different amino acids. Okay, and they're obviously the, this one here, And the one with the CH3, where the R usually is, okay? CH3, NH2, okay? That's it. That's it. Right. Now, what I'm going to do um, Let's do another example, actually. Okay, we'll do one more example. This time, we're going to go the opposite way. Okay, so... Let me just get this... Uh, Protein. Oh, this time I'm going to make it show you a protein. Um, oh, just, I don't even think this amino acid is. You get this, but just for the, the sake of this question, let's do. Let's do OH. Okay. Now, we've got a protein here. Okay. A few questions. Question A. Not that now. Question A will be draw the amino acid that makes up this protein. Okay, and then B, I want you to circle and draw a name. <laughs> okay, so circle, draw, and name the functional group found in proteins. Okay, so again, you can pause the video, do these questions, see how we get on. Um, example, okay, so question A, draw the amino acid that makes up this protein. Now, what you want to do, okay, I'm going to use a marker for this, is you want to separate it out. Now, basically, where the functional group is. So the functional group you need to know is the C double bond O N H. Okay, now we need to break that up between the C and the N. Okay, so the C and the N we break up. The C and the N we break up. Okay, and that's so important. Now, obviously we've lost water, so we're breaking this up. Um, we need to add water, so it's a hydrolysis reaction, but I'll talk about that more in another lesson. Um, so if we break that up, if we just draw, I'll focus on the middle one, if we just draw that, okay, so we've got N, H, C, 
O H H in the bottom and then C double bond O okay that's what we've got there with the obviously the bonds now remember that's not an amino acid yeah remember what an amino acid is it contains a carboxyl group and it contains an amine group so in order for us to have a carboxyl group here we need to have OH yeah for us to have the amine group we need to have NH2 so we put another H in so that there is our answer that's the amino acid that makes up this protein okay because there's three of them one two three we uh, circle the functional group found in the protein so one there and one there if we were to draw that it's the c double bond o n h and remember because it is a link you need to put in your wee in bonds and ask you to name it the amide link okay or peptide link and that's it really okay now I think I want to do one more thing or do I Maybe, maybe leave it there. Yeah, maybe leave it there. So we're going to recap what we've done. Okay, so we have done quite a lot actually. Right. So you need to know nitrogen obviously is an essential element and we use nitrogen in building up proteins okay now you need to know uh, two uses of proteins that is used for growth and tissue repair it's also involved in the maintenance and regulation of life processes and um, remember that proteins are polymers okay and they're made up of amino acids amino acids are the building blocks of proteins yeah, and they react together by a process called condensation polymerization. So there's probably quite a few things we want to hear. So proteins are polymers made from amino acid molecules. Yeah. Now, what's important is not to mix up an amino acid and a protein. It's easy done. Okay. So remember, amino acids are the smaller molecules. They contain a carboxyl group and they contain an amine group okay so COOH NH2 okay and they exist at either end of the molecule and you can see that you can see that there yeah you've got the carboxyl group and you've got the amine group there what you have is this C there's always a H bonded to, always one H bonded to a C, and R could be anything. Yeah, it could be H, it could be CH3, it could be CH2, CH6, H5. There's about 20 different uh, combinations of amino acids that we need. Okay, now, what else is important is that essential acids are amino acids that the body needs to make proteins. Okay, but the body can't make. So if somebody, uh, sorry, if a question asks you, what do we mean by essential amino acids? They are amino acids that the body cannot make. Okay, and how do we get them? We get them through food. Okay. The next thing we spoke about was the amide peptide links. Okay, um, they are the functional groups found in proteins. Okay, so amide peptide links are the functional groups found in proteins. Um, and then obviously they are made when amino acids react together in condensation polymerization reactions. Okay, I did a wee diagram here of three different uh, amino acids reacting get together. It's the same thing that happens over and over and over and over and over. The only thing that would change are 
this the middle part of the amino acids yeah where r would be different okay so that molecule shown r's different and then different and then different again okay so remember what happens a carboxyl group um, a, a carboxyl group of one amino acid reacts a uh, sorry the oh <laughs> the oh of one amino acid yeah belong to the carboxyl group reacts with the h of the amine group of a different amino acid and that removes water okay oh of the carboxyl group of one amino acid reacts with the h of the amine group of another of a different amino acid and we're losing water okay now because we've got we don't normally just have three molecules we'll have thousands millions that's why it's polymerization yeah so condensation because we're joining molecules with the elimination of water to form a larger molecule and polymerization because we're making a polymer so make sure if you get asked to draw a polymer you're putting in your end bonds okay obviously free water in the case of this and um, you are putting in your end bonds now that there that's your amide link yeah or your peptide link you need to know how to recognize it yeah so you cannot mix up your hydroxyl your carboxyl your carbonyl your amine group your ester link your peptide link you need to know all your different functional groups it's vital to unit two okay and yeah that, that, that's just a wee example you guys can look through that in your own time and then obviously the example that we're finished on so we'll leave it there i'll post up some questions on teams for us to do and we can do that okay thank you